The past few days have been a difficult one for stakeholders at the Ivory Tower, as Uganda's oldest university found itself faced with a strike from lecturers demanding for a 100% pay rise. As attention focused to the looming disaster that could deny thousands of students a chance for complete education, another bombshell was released in a financial audit carried out to ascertain the state of affairs in the university coffers. The outcome? A shock. A revelation that the university has debt to a staggering tune of 67 billion shillings, 12 billion more than the total annual allocation to the university from government. In a circular distributed to members of staff on the 15th of August by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Finance and Administration, Barnabas Nawangwe, the financial crisis is brought to light. The circular reads in part, quote, Makere University is experiencing unprecedented financial constraints after accumulating arrears to the tune of 67 billion. End of quote. This probably raises the question of how seriously the parliament charged with appropriation role of funds from the consolidated fund takes the education sector. We've been progressively increasing the subvention, the allocation to Makere University, but also we have created an enabling environment where universities like Makere can generate resources. The state of affairs is alarming, as spelled out in the Nawangwe circular. Government funding has been static at 55 billion annually. Pension arrears amounting to over 50 billion shillings uncleared, increase in water and power bills by 2 billion shillings, 1.5 billion increment in food costs, 1.2 billion unpaid internship fee for government-sponsored students. A question probably stands out on how the debts accrued to this magnitude as opinions vary on the possible causes of the high cost of administration. We have people within the university system who don't do what they are required of. Like you find a PhD holder who is not supervising any student, is not doing any research, and is just there, and is a PhD holder. We know how injured this university financially is because of Bariamoreba's dark designs. We know how misappropriation took place under him. For three years we accumulated debts. For three years we are published in the press, we were not number four. Shocking information emerges pointing to failure by the government to meet the cost of enhanced salaries following the Omaso report forcing the university to foot a bill of 1.3 billion shillings. The rude reality now stands tall. The fact that the private sponsored students now have to support the university's operations, the results disastrous. Students pumped with a lot of theories with no practical experience. This comes at a time when the lecturers are on strike, demanding for a pay rise with the president advising them to go and rear goods if they are not contented with the pay a statement that has attracted angry reactions from the lecturers. Our issue has been politicized. I should like to say that not all, of us, not all of us have got to become politicians before we can be listened to. We have to correct this mistake. And no one should paint us dark, brown, or any other color they may so wish. But all we need is to look at issues in the country and we mention them outright to those concerned. A section of stakeholders have called for the university to be declared insolvent to allow other sources of funding, though others say it is not necessary. I think that's an extremist view to declare the university bankrupt. I know it may be having arrears, it may be having insufficient funds to pay the lecturers, but there should be a constructive dialogue and engagement with the government, with the parliament, so that we see how much resources we can raise. For now, the students are the likely victims as the country's best-ranked university stares collapse in the face. Sabit Joseph, Double Television.